Hey everyone, I'm Cody with UpToCode. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to adjust any type of door just by playing with the hinges. No special tools or knowledge required. Let me show you how to do it. I've wanted to shoot this video for a long time and now we have the perfect scenario where you can actually visualize and see the gapping in the door. I'm gonna show you all that. I'm gonna show you how we did a little cut through section of a hinge and a door and a jam, we'll explain that too. Probably what you need to know is kind of the physics behind a door so that you know how to adjust it. So I'll teach you how to read the door. And like I said, even though this is a commercial door behind me, this method could be used for your exterior door, interior doors, anything. So let's, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. So you have to kind of read the door. Now in this scenario, I'm just gonna start at the bottom here and, and work my way around. Hopefully not repeat myself a thousand times. You just gotta look at the gapping in the door. So down here, it's fairly tight gap, okay? Right there, and then you wanna compare that to the one at the top corner. So if you look, if you compare the two, this gap is bigger, and the gap at the bottom is smaller because the door's heavy and it's weighing and it's pulling the top away and it's pushing the bottom in. Now, because the door is hanging like this, now if you follow the gap at the top, it's a little more narrow at the top left. And if you look at the right, it's got a bigger gap. And then again, because it's hanging this way, it's tight here. Follow your eye down, and you're gonna have a gap at the bottom, bigger gap at the bottom. So hopefully you can see the difference. So you just gotta scan your eye up and down and just compare those gaps. And another really critical thing to be aware of is where does your latch line up with the striker plate? Now I don't have those components in right now, but I've squared it off. I've made my dimensions. I've actually exaggerated it a tiny bit just so you guys can see it. Let me get my head in there. You can see that the door is down further than where the center of the striker plate would be. So then you just read the situation. Okay, if I can tighten the gap at the top left and pull it over, it'll bring the door up here, make that gap nicer. It'll pull the door over that way, make that gap nicer. All the gaps should be even. It'll raise my, my latch up more centered with the striker. And how we do that is just by using shims and hinges and a screwdriver. So you really don't need anything for tools. So let's show you this little example here. So pretend like this is the frame of the door and this pretend this is the door itself. So it's gonna sit like this and we're gonna show you the differences. And all we're gonna do is we're either gonna make this gap bigger or we're gonna shrink it and make it smaller. So the trick behind all this is just creating skinny little shims and which side of the hinge do you install these on to tighten or, or loosen that gap. So I'll show you what I mean. Now, I just loosened the screws off, but if you look, I've created a bigger gap near the pivot point of the hinge, there and there. So if I put shims in these locations, if you look here, that creates a bigger gap, right? Now, if I do the opposite, well, the opposite's a little tricky to, to show you right now. The opposite of that is just shimming it here and shimming it there, and that actually tightens it up, and that'll tighten that gap. But we just gotta show you and uh, show you the difference. So up on this hinge here, we wanna tighten this gap up, and how we're gonna do that is I've just, done it on our little jiggy here. We're gonna shim the opposite, so the opposite of the pivot point, here and here. I did extra shims just to show you, and it uh, will actually tighten that gap up. So it'll tighten that. Now this is just a sidebar. I told you you didn't need specialty tools, but if it wasn't working, you can, instead of using shims, you could always chisel out and angle that if you needed to, right? If the shims weren't working for you. Because, because I've exaggerated that and I'm giving you extra info, I would actually, because I've, yeah, I've added way too many, 
I could become hinge bound now. Shim the hinge just against the frame. And I wanted to check that before adding more, just to make sure it worked. It actually tightened this gap up quite a bit. I don't need to add any more. And if I did want to add more, I could add it to the door side of that hinge. So that looks good there. We're still a little bit off. We still have a little bit of a gap here and I still want to push the bottom over. So rather than trying to suck the, the top all the way in, I might get hinge bound up there. Now we're just going to gap that bottom out and push it that way, make this look better, push the latch up. You can tell it takes a little bit of playing back and forth to get it right. I'm just going to analyze this one more time. Actually, yeah, if you look, we got a way bigger gap at the bottom now than we did at the beginning. Now for the middle one, I just did come in happy medium between the top and the bottom just to give it some space. It's not binding on that hinge. We tighten that up quite a bit. Now that top gap, it looks way more parallel and the gap along the side. Now before I exaggerated this, but we've brought that door up at least a 16th, a significant amount. So I exaggerated that beforehand just to make it easier to understand. And yeah, we tighten that bo bottom gap up at the bottom. So that's how it's done. It's pretty simple. I've adjusted tons and tons of doors this way. Once you understand how the door functions and works, it's all about just shimming those hinges. So like I said before, it's you either shim here, closest to the pivot point to make the gap bigger, shim back here, furthest away from the pivot point to tighten the gap. And that's it. That trick can get you out of a lot of situations. You don't, you don't need a chisel, hopefully you don't. You just need a screwdriver, a little patience, and a knife to cut some of those cardboard or pieces of paper and that's it so thanks for tuning in let me know if you find this video helpful like subscribe all that good stuff and uh, check the description below if you want exclusive content from old code here catch you later I might try that again I was wasn't sucking in <laughs> I gotta suck oh, in a little bit I gotta do it like a God little bit you get a little no, What's that? Just... Well, I know, I know, I know. I'm not making. <laughs> He's trying. <laughs> I'm so glad I got that on camera. <laughs> you did? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you nugget. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, cool, okay. cool, 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 cool. You got this. Flex. Okay. But made me look it.